Ladies and gentlemen, so if you've been following me on this book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, we are on to chapter number eight, the lead gen model. So lead generation model, right? Let's talk about it, right? So your lead generation model, as important as your economic model is, your lead generation model is just as important. Why? One relies upon the other. The two go hand in hand. Once you know how many appointments you must have, you now have to generate the leads necessary to generate those appointments. That's where your lead generation model comes in. Leads are fuel to your economic engine. And here's the truth that you must never lose sight of. You can never have enough good leads, okay? Let's talk about the positioning battle. What is the positioning battle? One of the great ahas I took away from reading the marketing classic, The Positioning, The Battle of Your Mind, was the idea that the human mind is an inadequate container. The basic idea they share is that under the constant bombardment of advertising and marketing, the human mind becomes saturated by brands and can only hold a finite number of any one time, at any one time. A Harvard psychologist, George A. Miller, when they assert that the maximum number of product brands we can remember for a given category, the brand saturation point is called, for the mind, is seven. So the, the number of potato chips you can remember is probably seven, right? So any marketing. That's when I had a huge aha. Their book is a major brand advertising the multi-million dollar campaigns behind soft drinks, airlines, cars, and fast food chains. It made me wonder what the implications were for the local real estate agent marketing to their target audience, okay? Chances are if the average person can, can't can name more than seven brands of potato chips, they can't possibly name more than two to three real estate agents in their market. Data gleaned from the National Association of Realtors profiles of buyers and sellers tends to back this up. According to NAR research, 76% of all sellers contacted only one agent and 16% contacted just two. On the buyer side, the statistics are just as revealing. According to the NAR research, 59% of buyers interviewed only one agent and 22% met with just two. Okay, so if you think about it, top of mind awareness. When I meet realtors and they say, I don't do social media, I don't do this, I don't put myself out there like that. Well, there's somebody that does and the client doesn't see you. So if you don't put yourself out there like that and you don't learn how to do it and become better, guess what the client doesn't get to see? They don't get to see you. So they go to somebody else. They go to somebody like DNA Realty Group. They go to Dave because Dave is everywhere, right? So just think about that. Invest in yourself, market your name and presence. Here, and I just want to make sure that everybody knows, right? The quality is in the quantity. It is, it is undeniably true that the higher the quality of your leads, the better your conversion rate. So you have to have conversion rates. Here's the difference between mega agents and new agents starting out. I get it. We all want to have a really successful business, but we haven't spent marketing dollars for eight years to nine years of our business. And the reason is being we were prospecting based and marketing enhanced, which is something people lose sight of. It's like building your foundation on sand as opposed to building your foundation with concrete, a poured foundation, sturdy, strong. And the reason that is, is because we used to prospect, right? We had no marketing dollars, no marketing budgets. We used to prospect, which is essentially a free way of getting business. We would meet those people. We would end up being friends and family with them. We would end up learning our skill set has to be much better to prospect. Your skill sets have to improve. And then eventually, you do what I told you to do. You keep putting marketing dollars away, and then at some point, you're marketing, and your business at that point cannot be broken as easily, right? So you're constantly growing. So just be, just prospect. It's okay, new agents. You don't have to wait. Um, till you got a million dollars to market your business. You can go out there, pick up the phone and prospect today, building a foundation which inevitably builds your skill set. I have numerous and numerous stories where 
I would call and call and call, get hung up all day. Then I would call somebody, say this case was a for sale by owner, and the and she would she said something to the effect of I don't want to use a real estate agent because I'm trying to save the commission. And I said, Great, you know, your home's been on the market for two months. If I can actually help you sell it and take care of everything, um, would that be a problem for you? No, it wouldn't be a problem. Well, let me just come out there and take a look at what I could do. Go out there, meet with the person, list the house, pay for the photography, and the house did not sell, okay? However, that's a, another addition to my database. You get it? That's a person I'm building a relationship with. Just because the house didn't sell does not mean I don't have now a deeper relationship with this particular person. So what I did was became friends and family just like I do with all my clients that I get to meet, right? So they went from non-met to met to my inner circle. Now, once you're in my inner circle, I ended up selling a house to the brother, to the cousin, ended up the buyer, the seller themselves ended up buying and selling two different properties outside of that specific property. So I never sold that particular house. I did list it and it did expire. And uh, I met so, and then I've met so many other relationships from listing and, and selling those houses, right? And that's how you build the business. Most of our business now is uh, sphere, sphere of influence. People that we know, people that like us, trust us in real estate. Now, as the business grew, and now I'm hiring people on my team because we put away marketing dollars, right? Now we're prospecting and we're marketing, okay? Most of the foundation came from prospecting, people that we've built relationship with. And um, that's what you have to do. You have to take the time to let it build. Highly successful real estate agents will tell you, as far as lead generation is concerned, the quality is in the quantity. Whereas most real estate agents do modest lead generation and get modest results, a few do massive lead generation and reap massive rewards. They are the millionaire real estate agent, okay? Your marketing look and message are very, very important, but don't lose sight of the fact that you have to be out there putting in the work, right? No matter how you slice it, lead, lead generation will almost al always come down to the game of numbers. For effective lead generation, you need to be systematic, frequency and consistency, and go for sheer volume. When we were prospecting, and, I, and if you go back, you look at my cold calling videos when I was a big guy making no money, right? I changed my life. I changed my business. It's incredible. And uh, frequency and consistency. One thing we never stopped doing is we never stopped calling for five hours a day, six hours a day, four hours a day, whatever the time warranted. We did it five to six days a week. We did it nonstop. No matter how good or bad the results were, eventually the results came in incredibly high, right? Your lead generation plan must always be more ambitious than your income goals. Emerson was right when he wrote, we aim above the mark to hit the mark. And that was never more true than when we applied to lead generation. Markets shift, conversion rates slide, and things just happen over time that could cause you to need more leads than you originally thought you would need. Okay? Your best defense against these unforeseen possibilities is to go on the offensive and build your lead generation plan that will generate more than you think you'll need. And that's the most important step. The three key areas to lead generating are... First, there's the prospecting and marketing aspect. We just talked about that. When you generate leads and move them into your inner circles, okay? Second, there's the work to set up your database and feed it constantly. Once people are in your circles, you have to market to them, right? You have to be in front of them. So once, once these clients became my friends and family, guess what they're getting? An email from me, a mailer from me. A call from me. As hard as that is, I call them and I say, hey, how are you? How is everything going? How's the family? How can I help? Right? So I'm constantly calling them. I'm constantly trying to help my friends and my family. And these are people that I used to not know. Do you get how this works? And with the money we made from the business, we put it away and we put it back into the business to be able to better serve our clients, to be able to better serve our friends. Okay? Second, there's the work to set up your database and feed it constantly. And lastly, there is a systematic marketing to that database to generate new and repeat referrals. Let's take a closer look at all three. So you have to constantly market to, your, to those people. You have to keep top of mind awareness because guess what? If you don't, somebody else will. Now, 
There's a bunch of ways that you can market for business. If you get this book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, okay, you can take a look and follow along on these, on these um, chapters with me. But prospecting, you find them. That's what we did in the beginning for eight years of our career. We went out and we found people, okay? And marketing, you attract them and they find you. Prospecting is essentially kind of on the free side. And marketing is a lot more expensive. You can't market unless you saved up the money and put it away and grew your business strategically over time. I think the biggest difference is some people come into the business and they take off. I don't know how that goes. That's incredible. I wish I had that kind of business. For me, it was very slow and very steady. And now, 10 years, 11 years in the business, it seems to be paying off much better than most people thought even myself included, okay? You have to know that you can start slow and build it steady. It's not always just gonna take off. It's not always just as good as it looks. And then you have to be strategic. If you're, if you're in the business of helping people buy and sell real estate, your skills constantly have to be better. You constantly have to be better as a business person because people are trusting you with their um, investments. They're trusting you to help them. And I think if you're not in this business to actually help people, you should just get out because there's somebody like me that's in this business to actually help people. I'm over here changing lives and they're having kids in these houses and, and some people are retiring and we're netting them more money than anybody else. Our negotiation skills are great. And that's because over time, we kept learning, we kept growing, we kept getting bigger, we started off prospecting, we built a sphere of influence, we started marketing because we saved our money, and that's called the slow and then steady approach. And now we're winning, and I think you can win too, but just remember, you might have to start off slow. You might have to start off like I started off and do the work yourself. And that's a wrap on the lead generation model. We'll go into chapter nine, which will be the budget model. My name is Dave, DNA Realty Group with Keller Williams. I do this for free. If you found this helpful and you're a real estate agent or a client or anybody, you can basically send us your referrals. We do real estate in Massachusetts and in New Hampshire. We'll be happy to help and negotiate the best deals for the clients because that's what we do. I hope this was helpful. That's the lead generation model. I think that's one of the most important chapters in the business because in any business, you have only one problem, generating good quality leads to do people to do business with. If nobody comes into your store and nobody comes to do business with you, you don't have business. So just remember that the lead generation model, start off prospecting, save money, Go on to marketing and keep the prospecting base and within time your business will start doing magical things for you. My name is Dave. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, type them below. Share the video. I appreciate it.